uh, when it comes to postpartum individuals really especially if you've never had a baby you have no idea what to expect and while you are blessed with this new beautiful you know baby on the flip side it comes with some serious challenges this is chat over popcorn brought to you by aspire media and marketing hosted by angela ansa subscribe to our social media networks and follow the conversations on facebook youtube and instagram chat over popcorn where the conversations run deep starts now welcome to chat over popcorn where the conversations run deep my name is angela ansa your host for the show tonight we are going to be discussing postpartum challenges joining me to discuss this very important topic is eva soto Eva is a new mom to a beautiful baby boy. She's also a certified personal trainer and an entrepreneur. Eva, welcome to Chat Over Popcorn. Hi, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> oh, good. I'm so glad you joined me on the platform, Eva. You know, recently I did uh, a video where I shared my own experience with postpartum. And since then, I've received a lot of feedback on that video and how it resonated with a lot of people, right? Because uh, when it comes to postpartum individuals, really, especially if you've never had a baby, you have no idea what to expect. And while you are blessed with this new, beautiful, you know, baby, on the flip side, it comes with some serious challenges. So tonight, I want us to talk more about body transformation, right? took you nine months to get pregnant to create a human being really and so your body goes through all these transformation you add on pounds right like some people gain 30 pounds 40 pounds depending on your weight and your uh, eating habits and that sort of thing so you know as a personal trainer I mean what is the realistic expectation that people should go in Knowing that, you know, six months into it, one year into it, you may or may not get your pre-baby body back. That's right. I, I think that that last statement uh, it says it all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I 100% agree with you that um, so you spent nine months creating this wonderful human being, right? Um, and then after... And for me, anyway, I was like, okay, I'm going to have the baby. And then, you know, everything is going to be great. I'm going to be, you know, back to it. And it's great. I'm a personal trainer. I'm yeah. active. I'm doing this. You know, I'm vegetarian. And um, and so, like I was mentioning before, my expectations were one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then it happened. And then I had Nicolas. And then I still looked like I was three months pregnant. You know, four mm -hmm. months pregnant. I was like, okay, this is interesting. I was not expecting this. <laughs> no one told me this, you know. Right, <laughs> no right. one told me that this is what, what was going to happen. Um, that I was basically going to still look pregnant uh, throughout maybe the first three months, four or five months of Nicholas's life, right? Mm -hmm. So like that fourth trimester um, where, where I was getting myself kind of used to I guess the new my new body mm -hmm. um and so yes my I let's say body transformation I feel like a lot of the times people focus on like a weight like I must be a hundred and whatever whatever your weight goal is in your brain but then you have a baby I had a baby and I had this number in mind this number of like okay well when I was in college I weighed a hundred and blah 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 and then right before I weighed a hundred and this and that, but now let's say I am weighing less than what I was when I first got pregnant, but my body still does not look the same. Exactly. Um, I like my midsection, my hips, right? My thighs, they are still a little bit different, even though the weight, the weight scale is telling me that I'm lighter, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I have a different formation uh, as it is right now. And I don't know if this ha has happened to you, Absolutely. Um, but I've been working out and, um, and I waited a, a good amount of time to start that. 
Um, and so I don't, I don't want people to think, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get, you know, where I'm happy. I'm, you know, that's not what I'm saying. I, I think that it is possible for people to be able to get to the body that they feel comfortable and beautiful in mm -hmm. six months, seven months, eight months, nine months after you have your child. It really, really does depend on your body, your structure, your culture, just everything, genetics, right? Mm -hmm. um, and some people might take a year, two years, right? It really just depends. But every step of the way, um, what you have to focus on is, am I happy? Am I happy? And if not, then what can I do to make myself happy in the body that I have? Because my body is, I don't think, I'm of that opinion where my body is not going to be exactly the same ever. It's not. Oh my God, yeah. Because I just created life, right? We, I, we created a life inside of us. And so something changed. Mm -hmm. And so now I have to seek the body and my mental health, physical health, have to match so that I am happy with, um, with the results. So. Right. <laughs> and, and it's true, right? It is all about how individuals feel about themselves right recently I was talking to a friend and I said to her some people you know will pass judgments and let's say like we we're talking about you have to know where you have to be as far as ways to feel comfortable to feel confident right for your own mental health and I was saying to her how I feel like I've gained weight right I still have XX body weight that i am trying to shed and the person look at me and go what right but at the end of the day people need to understand that who you were if people did not know who you were before and they try to yeah. compare you to your you now you know maybe to somebody being at 150 is their ultimate goal like oh my god that is everything but to somebody 150 to them in their own mentality is being overweight right because they are comparing that 150 to maybe let's say they were 105 before right so it is all about where you were prior to the baby and like you said took you nine months to you know uh form this baby and and deliver this baby so it would take quite some time to uh get that baby weight off but at the same time too i think it's important for people to understand that the food that you eat right really is going to contribute to whether you easily lose the weight or you don't and as a personal trainer you would appreciate this right if individuals are not working out and you just home i know lives get very busy but you have to make the conscious effort to want to lose that weight for whatever reason right which bring us into the next uh, segue of our conversation for married couples, right? When you now have the baby and you want to engage in sexual activities. When you are leaving the hospitals, they tell you uh, six weeks is good to start engaging in sex. But realistically speaking, it doesn't have to be six weeks. It could be three months or whatever. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, sex uh, after having a baby. Okay. So I think it depends on whether you've had a C-section or vaginal birth, right? So mm -hmm. it depends on the trauma that you experienced mm -hmm. while you were given birth, right? Um, and so for me, right, mine was a, a vaginal birth. And so when when i went in you know thank god i was um far along enough for uh, i didn't tear very much right um so it wasn't a lot of stitch work or anything like that that they had to do uh, you know in order for me to kind of go back to uh something that was you know my normal my normal yeah. and um and so when i went to the doctors because i was feeling some kind of pain and I was like, hey, listen, I'm feeling this pain um, like up here in my abdomen. And she was like, OK, my doctor was like, come in, let me check. And when I went in, I think it was four weeks, not even five weeks. And she already okayed me to have sex after she saw me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even have to wait until the, the amount of time um, physically, like medically, in order for us to be sexually active. Mm -hmm. However, I was not mentally prepared. Um, right. I was just not mentally prepared to, uh, to, to, to be sexually active and neither was my husband. 
Um, I like we both had that conversation, and and I don't know about you and your husband, but we, we like we're we're pretty honest and open about communicating because you know we, I want him to be happy and he wants me to be happy. And so when we talked about it, we got home from the doctor. I was like, this is what she said, but what do you think about it? He's like, well, I don't know if I'm ready. To do it. You know, it's like I just saw the baby come out. Like like we need a little bit more time. <laughs> We needed a little bit more time than the doctor was like, oh, Blair, you can go ahead and do it. Yeah. Um, and honestly, like at the beginning, it was just like, it was like, okay, let's kind of try it. And, it, you know, it was like, I don't know, like you're a virgin all over again, but like, <laughs> like, oh, is it going to be painful? Is it going to be dry? Like right. for me, it was like a little bit of both. And so it was like, okay, let's try it for, oh, no, wait, no. Okay, we're not ready. And then, like, let's 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 start it two more weeks, two more weeks. So we kind of did it little by little, little by little. And then finally, like, literally, like, 10 months later, I feel like, oh, great. Now it feels good again. Like, but it feels no more. 10 months. <laughs> no, but, no, seriously, I, I echo the same sentiments, right? So for me, I had a, um, a C-section. So you think about this huge scar, right? So you are in pain, okay? You are really just emotional wreck. Your hormones are all over the place. And you talk about being dry. When your hormones are all over the place, it, you're not gonna be easily lubricated down there, okay? It just, it's just the way it is. And I, I wanna be 100% honest with people who are watching and maybe they are at a period in their life where they just had a baby and um they are feeling pressured to have sex you know you, you and your partner need to have the conversation you need to keep it open so that you both understand what is it that you are faced with right so you talk about it took you time to really get comfortable so minus the hormonal changes um before we were talking about just body transformation the fact that you know some people really equates having sex with confidence and all of that right so if you are not feeling sexy um yes. even though your husband or your partner may not uh have any issue with to 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 him you are still really bad and still you know they want to enjoy you to the fullest capacity but as a as the woman who just have gone through this transformation you may not even be there yet psychologically you are not there you know but i just want couples to understand that when you have a baby okay your body have gone through this miraculous transformation and it's okay to not feel sexy it's okay to not want to bounce right back in like you ever you know the first time it hurt i was like what is this i said stop 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 <laughs> No, 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 we're not playing this game. Sorry, no, bye. <laughs> this, this is not working. It's, it's not working. But yeah, but we did have the conversation. Make sure we were both comfortable at when we want to engage in that. Because it's supposed to be pleasant. It's supposed to be something that you enjoy. And if it's bringing you pain, you are not even mentally there, then it's not doing you any good. It's not doing your partner any favor. Now, another thing that people also struggle with is, you know, breastfeeding. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. Wow. That has been a very interesting experience. Now, the actual experience, like I don't even think like the first day, like there wasn't like there was no milk that was coming from from my breast. And so I think it took it, it, it wasn't like automatic. Thank goodness though, like Nicolas, my son, he like latched very quickly and mm -hmm. right away. And so because he was able to do that, then my milk shortly came afterwards, but it wasn't like, okay, done. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not to say that, you know, you might have a, not have a different experience, but for me, that's what it was. Um, and, and so when I left the hospital, everyone was like, yeah, you're doing such a great job. Breastfeeding is great. Oh my gosh, your baby's latch is amazing. Woo, right? I get home and the baby starts losing weight because he's not latched correctly because you know whatever it is i'm just like what i thought everyone told me that it was great that you know that i was all set ready to go um but it turned out that they didn't talk like they didn't talk to me about like the like li uh, uh, lip ties or tongue ties where it could prevent the baby from latching on correctly mm -hmm. so they were just kind of like looking very quickly okay you're all like checking off like, a little list okay you're all set go you're mm -hmm. done you're done so once I got home, that's when it, the struggle for me in breastfeeding began because he just, he was losing weight 
and um, and then it was hurting me. It was right. painful because of the way he was latching on. And so I actually had to hire someone outside to come, like uh, uh, not from the hospital, but uh, someone came, a, a lactation consultant. Mm -hmm. She came, she saw, and she was like, this is what's gonna make it better. And then I did exactly what she kind of prescribed, right? Mm -hmm. And after that, it was so much better. So, so much better. He started gaining weight. I started like, okay, being more confident um, in, in the fact that I was able to feed my son. Um, and so now he's 10 months. And so it took me a little while because, you know, I was sore. My nipples were sore um, from breastfeeding. And so I tried any and any and all of the creams out there, literally mm -hmm. the the vegan ones of this, of that, everything. And it was just, you know, it was still just very it was it was painful. I, after I, a, a little bit of time, I kind of got used to it and then he started teething. And so now we're kind of going at it again, where I have to kind of readjust and 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 see where the latch is off because if not, then the teeth really right. they really do hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's like biting. It's like biting into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another thing that I want to add on breastfeeding, right, is, uh, and I want viewers to know, uh, you can develop mastitis, right, and that is when. Mm the breast becomes so engorged that sometimes it becomes infected because you know the uh, milk ducts are all clogged up and so when that happens you really can actually get sick from it you can run fever i mean and when that happens you definitely want to call your doctor my goodness like don't don't stay home trying to put you know uh, cold or hot or whatever people are out there telling people to do call your doctor call your <laughs> midwife call your healthcare practitioner ASAP. So I just want people to understand that, you know, if you are experiencing this right after baby and you are breastfeeding, breastfeeding is great. You know, it has huge benefits to the baby. Uh, it is the golden milk for a reason. But for whatever reason, if you are not able to breastfeed, because it is hard, right? And just breastfeeding alone can make you so sad, right? And it would create the worst anxiety ever because think about it you are in pain all the time right and yeah. so when it's time for you to even feed your baby you don't want to do it right because you are psychologically just thinking about how hurt this thing is going to be and how painful you're going to go through the experience with breastfeeding even though it's supposed to be the most beautiful experience ever right nursing your your baby but because it hurts so much i just want people to know that if for whatever reason you cannot breastfeed, it is not the end of the world. Like supplements. Initially I did, I um, because I, he started losing weight when I was here. So they, they were like, hey, make sure you know you could, you could offer this. And so for that week, um, while I kind of got myself together, then I, I did offer it. But mm -hmm. now that you mentioned the, the not wanting to breastfeed because it's painful, literally, that happened to me like two weeks ago where my, my right breast was like huge, mm -hmm. okay? Like, I was just like, what? And I just woke up, like it was just like overnight. And I'm yeah. just like, what is this? Yeah. What's going on? And every time he would latch, it was so painful. Right. And I literally was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, am I gonna be able to do this? Can I really, can, am I gonna be able to feed my son today? Um, and then luckily that only lasted like 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, like on the phone trying to like, Hey, listen, like doctors, like I need the answers. And like the nipple was fine. It was just like, there was the milk production was like on, on, on like, I don't know, mega power. Yeah. And, but it was so painful. I was just like, yeah. oh, I don't know if I can do this. I yeah. was like, ah. Yeah. It, it is very painful. It is very painful. And some people get, you know, both the mastitis where the actual, breast is engorged that it end up becoming infection um and, and breastfeeding wow. provide you know besides the, the benefits to the baby it's also cost effective right it's very efficient you can mm -hmm. feed your baby anywhere anytime really there is no some people say you know every three hours which is the cycle for feeding but really it's whenever you want you feel like feeding your baby and they're up for it you it's just easy you don't have to think about it you don't have to do a whole lot of um and it doesn't cost any money so it saves you money on uh you know supplements formula those things are expensive <laughs> Those are so that's the best part the yeah. best part is that you can just feed it feed the baby whenever whenever they want to yeah. um 
but yeah yeah and as a society we i think we oftentimes stigmatize mothers who choose to not breastfeed right it's like because everybody want to you know go around and encourage breastfeeding which is great but i just think that we need to do a better job as a society in how we stigmatize you know mothers who may choose to not go through that pain and supplements i mean what's your i i think that if you can breastfeed then breastfeed yeah but there i i've known plenty of women and uh who actually have gotten sick or whose blood pressure uh decreases you know like some women just cannot yeah and um and i've been i've recently it's like fed fed is best right so if mm -hmm. you are able to feed your baby great but if that means that you are supplementing doing like a little combination of both but if it's causing harm to you or, mm -hmm. you know, like, or even if it's a hormonal or whatever, then of course, you know, you have to do what you have to do and right. you have to feed your baby. Right. Um, just like when my, when my baby was losing weight and I had to, I had to figure something out while I figure things out, while you figure something out, then you have to feed the baby. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, doing maybe research on formula might be might be a good thing because there are other formulas or maybe you you know that that you don't have to just stick to i don't know the the most popular one or whatever yeah. but i i do think i agree with you that there everyone is is very much like breast but breastfeeding 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 um and and but i never would want to make someone feel uncomfortable or, mm -hmm. or or like less than mm -hmm. right you're not yeah. less uh, of a mom because you Can't cannot or yeah. if you've chosen not to breastfeed mm -hmm. um i think that as long as you are doing right by your family i think that that's the best that, that you can do is as long as you're happy then the baby is going to love you regardless of what he's he or she is eating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and the last thing i want us to cover on this is establishing a routine and communicating with your partner right so mm -hmm. when it comes to even establishing a routine you'll get ready to be up during the night like right i mean People think babies sleep 22 hours a day, which they typically do, but for, for some reason, they are always up at nighttime, right? Yep. And that, that who is going to get up to care for the baby? Um, a lot, I know a lot of mothers really struggle with that, right? Because we have the breast, and so we have to wake up and feed a baby. But at the same time too, right? We live in a modernized world where there's pump, right? So you can pump and put it in the refrigerator. So fathers can get up and, you know, feed the baby equally. So how important it is to establish some type of routine, clear communication with your partner so that you both are not so stressed out because of this new baby, right? Because bringing a baby into the family dynamic really changes things and it amplifies whatever problems you guys got going on so let's talk a little more about how important it is to establish a routine absolutely i think that um bringing a baby home bringing Nico nicolas home literally kind of kind of shed light to all the little things that is like oh wait a minute oh we didn't talk about that <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a problem <laughs> uh, but yeah communication um when it like when it comes to nicolas and feeding because i am i am exclusively breastfeeding we i i tried pumping and things like that for a little while uh but then once i pumped and he fed from a bottle then he refused to breastfeed yes um and so for us uh unfortunately for me uh, it meant that any time that Nicolas, well, you know, was hungry or woke up in the nighttime, um, then I was feeding. Uh, now, when he, when we first brought him home, he was he was sleeping for 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 a long time, quite some time during the daytime and the nighttime. Um, then he would be awake for a very short uh, amount of a period of time. Um, but now that he's ten months, um, so what we'll do is. First, uh, my husband will try to kind of calm him down and see, cause you know, he'll wake up kind of whining, but sometimes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he kind of wakes up like frantically crying. Right. Um, and that kind of makes me think that maybe he has like, I don't know, like nightmares or something. So he'll try to kind of calm, calm him down. And if that doesn't work, then I'm, then, you know, in comes, in comes mommy with the milk. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's the only thing that we kind of have figured out where, okay, he's going to, he'll try to, to do whatever he can with like dad power. 
And if any of the things that he's doing, whether it's rocking, whether it's singing, whether whatever it is, if it's not working, then I'll, I'll you know, I'll get up and, and, and feed him and then he'll usually go back to sleep. But sometimes it has happened where Angel's just kind of like, you know, kind of uh, rubbing his head and he'll go back to sleep, you know. And so he just kind of needs that a little bit of extra, like a little extra love to kind of yeah. continue with his night. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we've done. And because I have uh, decided to stay home, um, then I don't mind as much because I get to also rest during the daytime and right. Angel goes to work, active work. And so I don't want him to be up all night either. Um, even though, I mean, it's a two bedroom apartment, but once Nicolas wakes up, like you can hear anywhere. And so right. he, once he wakes up, then we're all and awake anyway. Like anyway. So yeah. even though we do have that routine, it ends up being that we're everyone's just awake at the same mm -hmm. time, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> or fortunately. <laughs> it's all about really showing up for each other, right? It's all about yes. that support because it, took the two of you to bring the baby to the picture so right. you definitely don't want one person shouldering the responsibility and i think what end up happening is when the mom feel like she's the only one that has to take care of the baby without the support of the father then that is when um you know postpartum depression start to creep in right yeah. because uh you are emotionally exhausted you're not feeling great about your body you know your partner probably putting pressure on you to have sex all of these things you know and particularly now that we are living in this pandemic you're not having yep. that social interaction you know we are human beings and human beings thrive on social interaction and when you are deprived of that then really it does not um uh, help you with your mental health and so talking about postpartum depression, like I want us to kind of, you know, as new moms, encourage other moms that if and when you start to feel down or you feel like you just can't bounce out of this, you know, dark space that you are in and you are feeling resentful towards your partner and you're feeling angry towards the child, you wish you can't behold the child, you're not seeing the joy that the child has brought to your life because you are so clouded with, just everything that is going on, like it's like your world is you know, crumbling down. You want to seek help. You want to talk to your doctor. And I think, you know, even when you go to your checkups, right, you and I, we've both been through this. They always ask how you are feeling, right? And I think I want, the reason I, wanna, I wanted to talk about this thing, right, is I want people to feel comfortable that it's okay that you don't have great moments during postpartum. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with your healthcare providers and let them know what is it that you are feeling. I mean, what do you think? I 100% agree with you. I think that it is very important that if you are having thoughts of like hurting yourself or hurting mm -hmm. the baby or anything like that, it needs to be the next, the next thought, the next thing is dialing to the doctor mm -hmm. um, because you, it, we need to seek help um, when it's that serious, right? Um, and even in between, right, um, you know, my doctor asked, okay, like, are you feeling this, this and that? Like, you know, what level of sadness or right. what level of anxiety or like, like anger or whatever it is that you're feeling, there is certain, there's a certain level where it's normal because right. the hormones, the body transformation, everything, it, and it really does, it, it really does feel like you are kind of holding everything together mm -hmm. because because kind of a little bit, you, we kind of are. <laughs> right, right, yeah, exactly. You know, because it's just like, uh, with I, especially if you're breastfeeding, it's like, you, like without you, the baby just d doesn't eat, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, it's just that level of, there's another human being in this world that needs me so much mm -hmm. that it's sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I cannot mess up, you know? Like, this is so important. Um, and then because you're breastfeeding or even if you're formula feeding and you have the bottle and the baby needs to be a quiet space to eat, then now you're by yourself, right? right and so right. now you're alone in the dark with your sad feelings, yeah. right? And so, <laughs> and so, and sometimes I found myself like, wow, like I'm feeling a little bit extra sad and because I'm usually a pretty uppity person. And for me to, for me to feel sad, I'm like, this is so weird. Mm -hmm. And I'm like talking to my husband, like, I don't understand like what's happening. Like mm -hmm. I'm feeling so sad and I don't know what to do about it, you know? Um, and so oftentimes like in those sad moments, 
then I would reach out to like my friend who's a mental health counselor. I would reach out to my sister who is a, a mom of two, you know, talk to Christina, uh, my business partner. And so it's like, you know, you talk to the people who are experiencing or who, or I, I have spoken to people who are currently experiencing mm-hmm. or have uh, recently experienced um, what I'm kind of uh, dealing with. And also I'm honest with my healthcare professional saying, Hey, this is what's going on. And they're like, okay, no, this is like, it is a normal amount of, of, you know, I guess sadness that's happening just because it takes time to, for your body to re kind of recalibrate. Yes. <laughs> But it's a real thing. And I did not think, again, expectations. I did not think about it. Nobody warned me about it. And one day I just found myself sat in a corner feeding my son. And I was just like, what am I going to do with these feelings? And I've never dealt with, thank God, with depression in that way. And so when people were like, oh, yeah, I have depressive thoughts. I'm like, I don't understand. I can't relate. And now I'm like, wow, this is what you were talking about. And there's really nothing you can do to escape it except right. kind of ride through it yeah. and talk to somebody yes. and see if it's, if it's bad enough, if you need like a medical professional mm-hmm. or like medicine mm-hmm. to really help your levels out. Yes. Oh my goodness. For those who follow Chariba Papko, you know, my first video was about postpartum challenges and just my own personal experience. So I'm not going to repeat all of that here because I know people have watched that and they're like, okay, age, we got it. <laughs> You had challenges postpartum, but I appreciate you also sharing your experience, um, Eva, because that is exactly how I felt and exactly what I experienced. So, you know, I think the more we can have these conversations, the more other women, other mothers can understand and other dads, right, can also understand that it really is okay. Like, you, you're not going to be happy all the time just because you had this baby, right? You're going to mm-hmm. go through these mood swings and, and it's okay. But like you were saying, if it gets too bad where you are thinking about hurting yourself, hurting the baby, you know, leaving them in your car and running away, then you definitely yes. want to pick up the phone and call and, and, and get counseling, get medication, get, get professional help to help you recalibrate to your normal self so you can show up for your baby wow ever what an amazing conversation this had been i want to thank you so much for being open with your own experience so i, I want to thank you and i appreciate your time this evening and i hope that other mothers who are watching this video other fathers who are watching this video who are new moms and new dads and are struggling with it just know that it's it's okay it is okay and it's normal and you know you will get through it you will get through it definitely seek help if you feel like you have done everything in your willpower and nothing is working thank you so much i i i want to i want to take this time to just really thank you because i know that you're providing a platform that is so super useful and it's it's so super important because as you said we just don't talk about it enough and i wish i would knew things that i know now Mm -hmm. um before and Mm -hmm. so i feel like people who watch it now they know and so Mm -hmm. and it's thanks to you so i'm very grateful thank you for having me thank you i thank you so guys thank you for watching and remember our truths are best lived when we dare the moments until next time take care Thank you for watching this episode. To continue with the conversation, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell or notification button to be notified every time new videos get uploaded. Also, click thumbs up to like the video and follow our Instagram and Facebook pages to catch up on all the conversations.